Before I get into the video proper, I want to note a couple of things. Kumo said on a live stream shortly before the video's release. I won't be going over the entire thing because, well, it's 10 hours long. However, there are a few points I do feel need to be made. Uh, uh... Things like Lyo yelled at me, Lyo was mad at me. Notice they never actually say why Lyo was mad. Why Lyo yelled at them. Uh, what? Uh, what I seen from, I think it was Enra, was at one point Lyo threatened to fight Jordan. Well, there was no context to that. Did Lyo literally just go up to Jordan and say, you, me, out back? There was context to that. You're a fucking liar. There was context. They running their mouth, eh? It happens. No, we don't know. They don't fucking actually tell stories. They don't say claims. It drives me fucking crazy. You're a fucking liar. That or you just have selective hearing. Oh my god, you're fucking tarred. For those who don't know, in the clip Kumo's responding to, I'm talking about a comment Inla, which is how I've been told it's pronounced, and I apologize for mispronouncing it previously, left on my one shot on Zay. I'm not going to read the whole thing out because very little of it is actually relevant to what I'm talking about. However, an arrow on screen is currently pointing to the relevant part of said comment. Specifically, the line that just reads, Jordan claims that Lyo even threatened to fight Jordan at one point. Oh, I also really like this part, where Lyo expresses confusion over the claim that he was incorrect to treat Jordan differently because he transitioned. As far as me, treating Jordan differently because he transitioned. Yeah, I started treating him like one of the guys. Started treating him like a man. Because Jordan like a man? Him. I'm sorry, how is... I got trans people in here, am I wrong for that? He then goes on to say that Senate's about to validate Lyo's awful behavior and that he can't wait for me, somebody who really likes identity politics, to not push back on what Lyo just said. And then he's about to have these people validate it. So I want to hear if they validate it. I want to hear fucking Ephraim, the fucking identity politics genius, I want to hear Ephraim call Lyo on this. Because if he doesn't... Well, then I don't think Ephraim is, uh, is suited to talk about identity politics ever again. I don't know why it takes Kumo fucking commentary to point this out to you, though. So let's hear it. I then go on to push back on what Lyo says and essentially say that he misunderstood the claims against him. Well, no, no. Can, I, can uh, I play a little bit of devil's advocate, Lyo? Oh, can here I we was? go. Okay. I think the implication was that you were almost toxic, encouraging him to be toxically masculine. I, I think it wasn't explained at all. That's at least the pressure. Don't worry, though. Kumo still has something to complain about because, in his opinion, I didn't go hard enough, I guess. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I don't know if you heard what I was just talking about, but I just heard uh, F-Rom fucking uh, softball try to, like, press Lyo on that point. That is so funny. Well, at least F-Rom had the sense to try and say anything about it. It's just... It's, um, I'm sorry. Now, he does elaborate on what he means a little later in the stream. However, I still have some issues with what he said there, so let's play that clip. Oh my god, that fucking Ephraim shit. He just tried to softball it immediately. He's like, oh, Lyle, you're wrong, because I'm the identity politics crusader, and you're wrong. And I was like, just like, dude, why are you softballing this? You should be going hard in the paint right now. You, you, try, to get on, you try to get on everyone else over the slightest... Uh, infractions of what you deem transphobic, and you want to sit here and softball Lyo Convoy over that shit? Are you kidding me right now? Okay, first off, what do you mean by I could have gone hard? I'll grant you I wasn't aggressive with Lyo, but that's because in my mind all he did was not quite understand one of the claims being made about him, which is not an offense worthy of being aggressive over, in my opinion, especially in an impromptu Discord call. As for me, criticizing people for the slightest example of transphobia, again, what Lyo did there wasn't act transphobic. He misconstrued a claim against him, I assume, accidentally. Fuck, I had to say I think that was the point that was attempting to be made because I honestly wasn't sure if that was the argument being put forward. I got that impression from what I had heard, however, I was by no means certain of that. So from that perspective, all I'm really doing is offering a different way of looking at this claim, which although I feel is backed up by everything else, is by no means the actual intent of the people making it. 
Also, if you guys are unaware of what I'm talking about, this is the clip I at the very least had in mind when I was saying I was pretty sure these were the claims against Lyo. Funnily enough, it comes from another video Kumo did, this time interviewing an anonymous person who was also one of Lyo's adopted children at one point. Uh, would you say the transition had any effect on the family? Jordan's trans transition, uh, it did kind of... It didn't muddy the waters, per se but it did change how Lyo would talk to him. I remember being in a call before I went on vacation for Thanksgiving, and it, again, I feel like this is not something I am, like, I can fully say, but I do remember Lyo screaming and yelling at Jordan, saying, straighten your back like a man, stop crying. It's like, you need to talk to us, and... Usually, I would be the person to be like, yeah, he's right, he, he does need to talk to us, but in that moment, I felt like I was forced to say something like that. But I tried telling, um, I tried telling Jordan about how I understood how he felt, because I was in his shoes, because I felt like I felt like I had nowhere to go, I didn't know what to do. But... Lyo stopped me in my tracks from saying anything like that. He said, no, we're not doing that sympathetic crap. You're not doing that here. I had to hold my tongue from saying anything because I felt like I had to listen to him. But for Jordan's transition to being male, it did change how Lyo perceived him. And I think it was disgusting because just because someone changes their gender, it doesn't mean that you should change how you treat them. As a human being. Again, there are no direct references to concepts like toxic masculinity in that clip. However, there are mentions of telling Jordan to stand up straight and suppress his emotions while discouraging others from being sympathetic towards him in response to a question about how things changed as a result of Jordan transitioning. This led me to conclude that was what was being implied by this. However, again, that's merely my own interpretation. I'm not going to pretend like that's spelled out in the interview. Nor am I going to get mad at Lyo for something that very well might just not even be true. I don't know for sure that's what was implied, I'm just guessing. The only reason I even mentioned it in the first place was because I wanted to make sure as many angles were covered and as many stones were turned as possible. And side note, what do you mean by an identity politics crusader? How do I crusade for identity politics? What is identity politics in this context? Normally that refers to, for example, thinking that only a certain group of people can speak on a certain issue. Which, I should note, if I believed that means I logically couldn't push back on Lyo because I, as a cisgender person, would not be able to discuss issues like transphobia. However, I have never once held that attitude. So this point makes no sense on any level. With that said, I should note that if I did subscribe to that attitude, I would actually be even more critical of you guys' claims than I already was. And I know that because when I gave a previous draft of this commentary to a transgender friend of mine, that being Hester, who proof watches all of my videos, she was actually more critical of this point than I was, and said that I, quote, assumed they were making more sense than they were, pointing out that even if you disagree with how Lyo treated Jordan, that would not inherently be evidence of transphobia. Because then you would still need to prove Lyo is treating Jordan differently than he would any other man. Which is an entirely different claim. I'm not going to go too much into it, by the way, but there's this constant attempt to paint me as nothing more than a Lyo convoy yes man. Because the idea that I've looked at the evidence presented to me and just haven't found it compelling is obviously impossible, I guess. I especially want to note one part where Kumo says I've only heard Lyo's side of the story. But, but yeah, guys, Lyo, t guys, Lyo, these allegations against Lyo, uh, I heard it from, I heard Lyo's side only, and I asked him about a month ago, and so technically I've looked into this, 
And um, that's more than anyone else in the Senate has fucking done, as if that's a positive. Um, that's anything. That's more than the, anyone in the Senate has done, uh, despite fucking relentlessly defending him. And um, yeah, that just adds more credibility and uh, makes these guys look bad. These people were bad mouthing and ranting about. Um, yeah, the, that, that concludes my point here. Even though I explicitly say that I did hear the other side of the story, specifically in the form of Zay's video on Lyo, and that's where my research on this started. Uh, I don't know how long Senate as a whole has been aware of this, uh, so correct me if I'm wrong, Lyo, but I have been looking into these for longer than most of Senate has. Do you think that's a fair mm -hmm. statement? Yeah. Because I heard them in Zay's video online. Never mind how this story doesn't even make sense on the most basic level, because I would have to know what the claims are in order to ask Lyo about them. Anyway, I'm not going to play this next part because of just how long it is, but Kumo essentially uses this as a springboard to say that I should not believe things just because Lyo tells me them. And on that, believe it or not, Kumo and I actually agree. However, him saying that shows he missed the point as to why I brought brought up Lyo telling me all of this in the first place. I was responding to somebody else who said they believed Jordan because Jordan had told them this and seemed very sincere. I was pointing out that Lyo had told me contradictory information and also seemed incredibly sincere doing it, not to make the point that I think Lyo is absolutely infallible in this situation, but to instead make the point that somebody telling you something, while seeming sincere, doesn't equal what they're saying being true. This was a very individualized criticism levied against a single person I had interacted with. And Kumo is not only removing that fact, but he's treating my rhetorical point about how little sense it makes to use that logic as if it's evidence of me actually using the logic I am strictly denouncing. Anyway, I've been talking about this stream for way longer than I intended, so I'm going to end it here, especially given this isn't even the video I was going to cover. Because Kumo recently did a full video on Lyo Convoy, and there is quite a bit I would like to say about it. The first thing I want to note is this video is full of spurious claims. Take this part as an example. I don't do this for some asinine idea of clout. Most of my predator hunting, most of it, believe it or not, is quiet. The reality of this situation is it couldn't be further from the truth. Lyo is often too busy playing Among Us and baby talking peaches in a Discord call at least 15 hours a day. There have been complaints ad nauseum that Lyo Convoy, when reached out to, can't do anything for these people. Myself included. I've tried to reach out to Lyo Convoy a very long time ago, long before I was ever removed from the Senate. Black Blackballed from the community, Lyo Convoy actually does not handle predation cases. Lyo Convoy does not help victims. Aside from stalking, doxing, harassing, and getting these people in calls to badger them and upload it to his YouTube content farm, Lyo Convoy does claim that the only thing he can do is assist victims in making police reports and telling their parents. Not only something that is probably taught to every child in a fucking school assembly, but you can learn the latter through a simple Google search or a YouTube video. There are plenty of these. I, hell, I can link some of them in the description if you genuinely don't know. You might have noticed Kumo showed no evidence to back up his claims. And this is going to be a bit of a pattern throughout the video. Many of these topics aren't even revisited, so it's not as if he shows evidence later on. Now, some of those I can just brush off as hyperbole, such as saying that Lyo spends 15 hours a day in calls with hopeless peaches. Although I should note, Kumo says Lyo does this instead of helping victims. Is being in a call with hopeless peaches mutually exclusive from helping victims, I don't get the logic there. He mentions unspecified complaints about Lyo, but doesn't explain who's making these complaints or what their situations were. He mentions he reached out to Lyo Convoy for help, but doesn't tell us what he wanted Lyo to help him with. And so on and so forth. 
He claims Lyo says the only thing he can do is help victims make police reports, and he shows no evidence of Lyo ever actually having said that. I'm not even claiming any of these are incorrect, by the way. I'm just making the point that Kumo failed to show any evidence for what he stated. And by the way, about that last part where Kumo says he'll link resources in the description to help victims file police reports, yeah, here's every link in his description, none of them are to tutorials about how to file police reports. Of course, when Kumo does attempt to give more specific examples, he shows he really doesn't know the situations being talked about. Take a part that begins with him playing this clip of Lyo Convoy, talking about the Vita situation, where Vita was exposed to be a predator. We did the best we could. We found out three days later we exposed him. We had to catch him off guard, we had to make sure his victim was safe because he was going to absolutely target her, and still does to this day. Kumo goes on to get the victim being mentioned in that clip wrong. He is under the impression it was Jordan. The story goes that Vita allegedly groomed this person who went by Mint Heart. Mint Heart would later transition and start going by Jordan. I managed to get in contact with Jordan, but the person Lyo keeps vaguely referring to is just Jordan. The person being talked about in that clip was not Jordan, it was a different victim of Vita's named Jazz. Kumo just got that entirely wrong. Jordan even mentions in his interview with Kumo, in a clip Kumo plays in this video, that he was chastised at the time for sticking by Vita despite what he had done. I was, uh, I guess, kind of cast out of Senate, because Senate was a thing at that point, because I was sticking by Vita despite what he had done. What he had done being preyed on Jazz. This can even be confirmed through Queen Serafina's video on Vita. After the fallout from exposing him, Mint Heart, a longtime friend of Joshua, decided to ignore all reason and stay around him. Later that year, they came around to their senses and started talking to us again. This is from a video Kumo uses as B-roll footage in this video, by the way. The evidence against what he is saying is literally staring him right in the face. Kumo then goes on to make the point that Jordan was not moved in with Lyo because of any specific situation involving predation, but instead because of suicidal tendencies they had while living in Nebraska. Mint Heart was not removed from the situation to protect them from Vita. Mint Heart was actually moved in with Lyo because Mint Heart was prior to this, living in Nebraska at the age of 18, all by their lonesome, whilst being suicidal. Taking a firm stance against a claim nobody has made. Fuck, the way Kumo describes the situation is virtually identical to how Lyo described it in his first stream on Brian Mullins the Fox. Actually, what happened was Jordan moved out on their own. They went to, uh, God, what was that state? Uh, Nebraska. They moved to Nebraska. They moved to Nebraska. And then some things happened in Nebraska, and now Jordan lives with me. He says this again, by the way, making it explicitly clear Lyo did not move Jordan in with him so he could be protected from Vita. Well, as explained in the first clip of Jordan's testimony, Lyo Convoy, again, did not move Mint Heart in with him in order to protect them from Joshua Vita. Which, yeah, obviously not. That wouldn't make any sense given the situation with Vita had nothing to do with where Jordan lived. It was entirely over the internet. Also, regarding Jordan's home life, we get this part. Mint was worried he was going to get back a third night and had no options. No friends to stay with, no shelters that would keep them. So the only thing anyone could think of was setting up surveillance so if something did happen, Mint could send it to the police. Mint. Not me, not anyone else. And on top of that, it was an idea. It's not something they went through with, because thankfully they didn't need to. Just felt the need to interject here. The reason they didn't need to is because the prior that Lyo just said was a bit misleading. It wasn't that nobody did anything or tried to help Mint Heart, it's that they couldn't due to involvement from people like Lyo Convoy, the existence of the GoFundMe. First off, this doesn't actually make any sense. I could think of some rather simple ways Jordan's mother could have helped him in this situation. For example, she could have not let the person stay the next night, which it's explicitly stated he did in a clip 
that Kumo plays in this video. Now here's the context. A minor who went by the name of Mintheart was touched in their home. This was taken to their school, their mother, and the police. The perpetrator was their mom's ex-boyfriend. None of the groups I've mentioned did anything about it. Not the police, not the school, and their mother even let the creep stay the night after she knew what he did. What? Was she forced to let him stay around because of a GoFundMe? A GoFundMe which specifically mentions letting him stay after she knew what he did. As the thing which caused its existence by the fucking way. Because nothing about this makes any sense on any level. But I will show screenshots up on screen of Jordan clarifying that this wasn't their idea. They were in fact coerced by these internet vigilantes. And not only that, Mint Heart wasn't the one who made the GoFundMe. So in actuality, Mint Heart had no control over whether this GoFundMe was taken down. Jordan specifically said they were the one who made the GoFundMe in a message you show on screen during that clip. Granted, they do say it was originally other people's idea, however, Kumo said Jordan didn't make it, something Jordan did not actually claim. Look, I'm just going to be blunt, I have nothing to add that I haven't already said. Everything Kumo says in this video is either irrelevant or totally incorrect. I haven't even gotten to things like a 13 minute segment regarding Gilded Pooh's infamous flash drive, which contains zoophilic images as well as images of animal abuse, where he does say he has them. Meaning, if he was brought on to respond to the claims made by Lyo that he does have these images, he's basically saying Lyo is right in a video that I thought existed to call Lyo a liar. I am not even bothering with that because, to be blunt, there's no point in arguing against somebody who's not even arguing against the claim they're supposed to be arguing against. All I'm going to say is this was a very terrible video all around. Good night and good luck.